opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick buzz's youtube channel and press that bell icon now now let's move on to the white ball game and this is an extraordinarily packed schedule i don't know if you've seen before michael where you've got 17 a 17 day tour with 11 playing days in them and as a result we've got interesting phenomenon developing where india have got a different team for the first t20 international and then you suddenly realized oh no hang on there's a t20 world cup we need to get our best players back in so different team for the second and third t20 internationals and some one day players like shikhar dhawan coming in to play the odis so there's there's a lot of flux number one is that good and number two what do you how, how do you see the t20 series panning out with england having a very 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 different side i mean uh, i th- there's no root there will probably be bester but no Lee, no alex lees there is no uh, no crawley no anderson no broad no potts uh, no leach so england's team is completely different and india's significantly different Yeah, I mean, England's uh, white ball squad's exceptional. Josh Butler's first time of asking as the, the full-time skipper. Uh, big chance for Matt Parkinson um, to play as the leg spinner. Richard Gleeson from Lancashire's a, a real talent. I know they're looking at him for the T20 World Cup. Uh, Tamar Mills obviously back in. But you look at that team with Livingston, Moe and Ali, Sam Curran, David Willey, Milan, Roy. Harry Brooks, a, a player that will play games. Uh, he's had a tremendous time of it at Yorkshire. Um, England will, will, will be very hard to beat, Harsh. I mean... I just look at the schedule now for, for, for particularly England and, and, and India. It's ridiculous. It really is, and we'll see more and more of this over the next few years, where it's just going to be impossible uh, that all three format players will be able to play all three formats. They'll be having to miss series here, series there, but still continuing. I hope to continue to play across the three formats. But the management of, of, of all these teams are going to have to be very clever in terms of giving them a little bit of a breather. You know, I, I look at Virat in particular. I know he had a little bit of a rest at the end of the IPL, but he just looks to me like he needs a, a sabbatical. He looks to me like he just needs three months away from cricket. Go and sit on a beach. Go and do what you can with your family, and then come back because you know a career of 20 years, which he probably will end up getting because he's such a good player. You know, to have a three-month break, you know, is it going to affect him? No, I think will it help him? Yes. Uh, and I, I look at a lot of the players. Uh, I look at Joss Butler that England might, may look to. Bring into the test uh, team and, and, and talented and, and, and very aggressive and at the top of the order he could be absolutely a very exciting player to watch. But to play all the formats and the IPL and captain your white ball team, oh, it's a tough, 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 tough ass. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think clever management is required, um, and it's not going to go away harshly. It's not going to be that uh, this is just the one-off that you're going to see these kind of situations. I think that's going to be quite uh, a common trend. Just look at two weeks ago, England were playing in the Netherlands while the Test match team were playing. At Headingley, I think we're going to see more and more of that, where there'll be pocketed white ball series potentially against. Uh, I'm not saying you know the lesser teams, you know they're not the more high-profile, powerful teams. The Islands, the Scotlands, the Netherlands. I think those kind of series will possibly be played around the same time as Test match cricket, and, and that's fine. There's enough player to go around. Yeah, and we're seeing the specialisation coming in too. So we've already seen that with Australia, with England, now with India. Let's take a look at India's. T20I squad, and it's a little complicated because of the comings and the goings. So this this is the overall this is the overall Try squad. It's, it's, it's a, okay, okay. Here I go. Ruturaj Gaikwad, Rahul Tripathi, Sanju Samson, Venkatesh Iyer, Arshdeep Singh will only be in the squad for the first T20I, and then for the rest of it, you will get Virat Kohli and and the others. Virat Kohli, Rishabh Pant, uh, Ravindra Jadeja, and the others coming back. But for India, I, I suspect it's going to be a problem of plenty because while the lead players were away, Deepak Hooda has done really well. Surya Kumar Yadav is someone who just gets T20 cricket. He's a wonderful player. Do you leave Hooda out? Do you leave Surya Kumar Yadav out? What what happens with Rishabh Pant? But Ishan Kishan has done well. So I just think there's a problem of plenty. And while you might think that's a good uh, problem to have, I'm not sure it's always a great problem because everyone's looking over their shoulder. So I'd be very interested in seeing how Rahul Dravid plays it. Whether Deepak Hooda has earned his spot. But the Sanju Samson goes back, but he's done well in the chance that he has got. So, uh, very curious to see how they go about it. Whether they've already identified a core group of 16 or 17 players who will be able to play well in Australia, where the tracks will have a little bit more bounds. I only hope they don't bring the boundaries in Australia. We saw already when the boundaries are back, T20 cricket changes character. So, mm-hmm. Will Warren says, "No, you're shaking your head, Michael. You think they're going to bring the boundaries in, aren't you?" 
No, I don't think they will. I think Australia want big boundaries. Oh, good. They, I think Australia yeah. will know that um, it'll suit their style of play, their, their real aggressive power hitting down the ground, and also it'll suit their bowling attack to the ball bounces at some of these mm. teams that necessarily don't play the short ball as well. Um, India are a, a talented bunch, and they should be right up there with the favourites from the T20 World Cup, but they've got to find a better mechanism. I, I just worry about the bowling options for India. I don't know if they've got enough. They always seem to have five bowling options, six batters, and I, I, I personally would want seven options in T20 cricket. And it's it's trying to find out or, or find players in that top five who can offer you a few overs. Maybe it's hard at Panya, um, bats in the top five, and that gives you an all-rounder in that top five, which spreads you. You, you kind of line up um, a bit thicker, but um, I, I do worry for India that they don't have enough bowling options. And the other issue that uh, everyone will be looking at in the last two T20 internationals and then later on is the form of Rohit Sharma and the form of Virat Kohli. If those two are going well, India will suddenly look a very different side in Australia. Mm -hmm.